Welcome to Stoppage Time. This is a hot cocoa takeover. Your boys have been fired after last week's results, and after my hot streak, I decided to take over. Just kidding. I would never do that to you guys. Here is the GOAT and IPJ. Welcome to Stoppage Time with IPJ, my man. Yes, that's right, the blonde bombshell, the betting expert, the unicorn, John Buckensheimer. Hey, Bucks, how you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing well. I was nervous for a sec about that little hot cocoa video. I thought after a week she might be taken over. I mean, she has it. She's what, missed one play her entire time on the show so far? Yeah, but at the end of the day, who the fuck does she think she is getting to open our show? <laughs> Buckets. Okay, you may be four and one, but at the same time, you have to do a hell of a lot more than that to be opening the show for our loyal listeners out there. Maybe we'll put it to a vote. Okay, loyal listeners out there, drop uh -oh. a comment. Who do you want to see do the war cry? Do you want it to come from Hot Coco or do you want it to come from me, IPG, or maybe it's Buckets. Maybe, I don't know, I, I Jeff, whoever it is. I'll tell you one thing. If we actually put up to a vote, Frank is making 500 accounts and he's voting all of those on hot cocoa. So we got to be careful there. I don't think uh, Frank has ever swiped left in his entire fucking life. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, Buckets, how you doing, buddy? Just checking in on you. Uh, doing well, man. It's one of those weekends where the bets weren't great, but my mental health is doing surprisingly well because I've learned to kind of be responsible with how I'm betting. And I've learned not to connect my self-worth to the actual success of the bets themselves. Good piece of advice for everyone out there, but doing well today, man. What about you? Hey, hey listen, I love to hear that. Of course, everybody out there, we are trying to create an awareness um, in the battle in the protection of your mental health and making sure we raise awareness about the importance of taking care of yourself and buckets. What he just said right there, it warms my heart and it makes me feel a bit better. Not doing too great with my mental health, but I know when it's time for me to just take a step back and it's, it's multiple things. It's not anything in particular. I um, had a few deaths recently, which obviously was uh, a bit influential in my mentality. Um, but of course I was betting all of last month. It was a roller coaster up and down all of last month, ended up in profit for the month but at the same time decided you know what i'm gonna take a bit of a break i'm gonna take a good seven days just kick back and enjoy the games don't have to put a wager on there just to protect myself to see if maybe that was it and um, but also eat better look after myself take a break from the alcohol do little things that i can possibly do and in case you couldn't see this sweat right now the vest i'm wearing i'm not pat mcafee no i'm not i'm not as jacked as him i'm fucking jacked but i'm not as jacked as him and and I didn't just necessarily come from a hot shower. I uh, basically just had to take care of my kids and then uh, go and get myself ready for the show. So I'm flustered a little bit. Plus, of course, workouts are a bit crazy right now. So looking after myself across multiple facets buckets, that's probably the message we should be sharing about people out there. Absolutely, man. We cannot emphasize enough how important your mental health is. And it could be the little things. It could be taking a break from betting. It could be taking a break from drinking. It could be kind of getting back in the gym. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. But make sure you're always prioritizing yourself, your mental health, and take breaks when you need it. Okay? We'll always be here for you. You know who's not taking a break? <sighs> Hot Coco. Hot Coco ain't taking no motherfucking break. She is oh. on fire right now she was on Giacomakis anytime goal score from Atlanta United's game against Chicago this past weekend Giacomakis scored right on half time and get this bucket 10 minutes into the game he picked up an injury sort of like limping around a little bit there and I thought fuck he's gonna come off the field here uh, maybe you get lucky and you get your money back maybe it's a push maybe it's not maybe you lose your money because he did play 10 minutes anything can happen in that situation but Yakumaka stepped up and I was on the way to the restaurant so I didn't get to see the goal itself. I was on the way to a restaurant with my friends and uh, I heard hot cocoa in the back seat. Yeah! <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Yakumakis just scored. He was the first one to score from uh, three goal scorers on the day. Tiave scored two uh, goals, of course, to make it 3-0 to Atlanta United at home. They seem to be the team to beat. She's now sitting at four and one from the five bets she's played so far. I mean, MLS and Coco equals the perfect match. What do you think? It really is, man. I saw some people betting not responsibly, but I saw a couple of comments saying it's a hot cocoa bet. Of course, I put 10 units on that play, which I don't love to see. But again, it's hot cocoa. So what are you going to do about that? All right, let me just put it out there. She's good right now. Okay, she's good right now. We're doing our YouTube thing. We're having some fun. Producer Jeff's changing the game for us. We're looking pretty fucking awesome because he's here. But how do you think she's going to handle the big fucking network when there's big ass cameras, you're in the studio? I mean, listen here, I've got a question for you. Okay, this is where we're down here. 
Will she handle it A better than you? Or will she handle it B better than you buckets? Which do you think would be the correct answer? I'm gonna go with my gut here and take B better than me. <laughs> Hey, it's not easy, right? When those lights go on in the studio, you either have it or you don't. And I know my wife, all right? She gets a little nervous sometimes. She might be killing it on the YouTube front when she gets to record 400 fucking times until she gets the right recording and looks perfect for us to put it out there on our show stoppage time. But when you get one take and that camera says fucking red light on, producer Jeff is like, action! Can she handle the pressure? That is yet to be found out. Can't wait for that moment there, Buckets. Anyway, Buckets, it has been a bit of a difficult weekend, obviously, on the betting front. I know it's frustrating for you. But at the same time, we got to go through it because we owe it to our loyal listeners out there. How did you do? Roll through them all. I know we pushed uh, so many bets, probably too many bets. Uh, but at the same time, how did you get them? Well, last week, I told Jeff he had to be ready with the ding, ding, ding sound. Jeff, this week, be ready with the because this was a tough week for me and a tough week for a lot of us here. But I'm going to rattle through these because as Ian said, we owe that to you guys. We don't hide from our losses. We don't go, oops, last week sucked. Let's move. No, we're going to be honest with you guys. So here's a bunch of losses. We started with Barcelona women's versus SK Brad Barca to score two in the first half. Nope. Friday, we moved on to Black First versus Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town over one and a half team total. They went up 1-0 10 minutes in and then did nothing for 90 minutes. Nope, and I bounced back, not really, with Jonathan David anytime goal scorer for Lille. Lille scored three goals, three goals, and none of them came from their best goal scorer. Three X's in a row to start me off, but surely Bayern Munich will help me bounce back. Of course not! Why do I keep trusting Bayern Munich? Both teams to score in the first half is another no. And then finally, Tottenham versus Luton Town. Both teams to score in over two and a half goals. Ding, 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 Jeff. Really emphasize the dings on that ding, one. Ding, ding, ding. Kept going with Livingston versus Celtic. Celtic over two and a half team total. We did cash that. Man City versus Arsenal. Man City over one and a half team total. Did not cash that. We then took Villarreal double chance against Atletico Madrid on Monday. Lost that, but did win Sassuolo versus Udinese. Both teams to score. Man, we did have a lot of bets. And then finally, Tuesday, the Cinderella story came to an end. Zabrucken did not beat FC Kaiser Slaughter. They looked great in the first half, but fell apart thereafter. An atrocious keeper error. And finally, West Ham versus Tottenham. Tottenham to score in the first half. They did, Ian, in the first four minutes. So that was a nice little end to the week. But overall, a pretty tough week for all of us, right? Yeah, it's not easy betting this week, especially when I throw so many bets out there. And of course, we were betting against each other. Our producer Jeff, he was fucking horrific once again. <laughs> uh, he's, going, he's going for 5-1 scoreline predictions and shit like that. It's like, come on. Like, of course, what chance? And that's why we always emphasize betting responsibly. Because even if it's producer Jeff going for a plus 18,000, or if it's fucking buckets going for a minus 110, it doesn't matter. You always have to bet responsibly and think about the big picture as to what can happen. And I heard you say there that the, you saw people betting irresponsibly play on the Yakimakis bet and he got injured right so for people out there you have to be careful because red cards injuries will absolutely kill your bet and in our game it happens all the time and sometimes the bets just simply don't fucking hit unfortunate to you buckets but as we do on our show stoppage time we pick up we move on to the next week here's how i did this past weekend i was obviously on the classic or best bet as well i was on Bayern munich money line and total goals to be under four and a half the under four and a half of course set with Borussia dortmund winning by two goals to nil Ariemi scored 10 minutes into the game rearson scored 83 minutes into the game and Bayern munich fucking hell i can't believe i'm saying this one dortmund celebrated their first bundesliga away win at Bayern munich for 10 years it was a 3-0 victory in April 2014 and their 10th Bundesliga away win at Bayern Munich overall um, more than any other club, which is absolutely ridiculous. Congrats to Matt Somos. He made his 29th appearance in the Classicer. Of course, he's played for both clubs. Wow. That moves him ahead of Michael Zork. Now, because of that result, Buckets, of course, I missed my bet right there. So whoever out there enjoys us missing our bets... <laughs> Enjoy this moment. Um, because of that result, Bayer Leverkusen, they, of course, have got 73 points uh, to their name. That's equal in a club record that they've got. And uh, obviously, if you go back to the 99-2000 campaign, they were pretty same. So Leverkusen already collected more points than last season's champion, Bayern Munich, had 71 points, right? So this is incredible what Leverkusen are doing. But I want to break this down a little bit more for you, Buckets, because this is a really important factor for a lot of betters out there who are enjoying plays and wagers um, on the Bundesliga. Uh, Leverkusen unbeaten, 13 points clear of uh, the champions Bayern Munich right now with seven games to go. Now, the question would be, how soon can Jabi Alonso's side officially win 
the German Bundesliga, the Meisterschale. Now here, I just dived into a little more for everybody out there. Die Werkself have led all the way since uh, 22 out of 27 match days and wow. 23-24 campaign. As things stands, with seven rounds to go, the earliest date in which they can be confirmed champions is match day 29, which is on the 13th, 14th of April. That assumes that Leverkusen beat Union Berlin and Werder Bremen and, of course, Bayern Munich lose to Heidenheim and Cologne, which won't happen. Uh, third place, Stuttgart could also be the factor depending on the results. But get this, Puckus. This is where it gets interesting. Just three wins, just three wins would be enough for Alonso's men to win the title regardless of Bayern's results. So if, Jeff, you could put the fixtures back up there real quickly. If you look at the, the fixtures that are coming for Leverkusen, they've got obviously big games coming up. Union Berlin, there's one. We know they've got Europa League, so let's just ignore that one as well. But they've got Union Berlin, then they've got Werder Bremen, and then that third game would be at Borussia Dortmund. If they win all three, they could be current champions at a Dortmund. Your thoughts, Morgan? My thoughts are that I'm just trying not to be too sad this season, but props where props are due and credit where credit is due. This Leverkusen side is doing something that we have not seen in over a decade in the Bundesliga. And as a Bayern Munich fan, I'm saying this, it has been truly an incredible thing to see. I've enjoyed watching Leverkusen. Obviously, I've enjoyed betting on Leverkusen. But dude, how good would it be to watch them win the league at the yellow wall? I know they might want to do it at home or do whatever, but that would just be tremendous. And this team's not slowing down. I mean, they're just beating everyone every single week. I, I it's, a, it's a real possibility right now. Jeff is completely playing with you right about now. I know. I'm sorry, Jeff. And post-production because you just said win the league in front of the yellow wall. That would be terrible for Dortmund fans out there. Uh, but also for the Bundesliga, it would be quite interesting. Leverkusen have never won the Bundesliga. I'm just going to repeat myself. They have never, ever in their history won the Bundesliga. So this would be quite an achievement for them. And uh, it's just a matter of time now more than anything else after that loss for Bayern Munich against Borussia Dortmund. However, in that game, Buckets, we did get a bit of a jump on our opportunity to finish in the top four for Borussia Dortmund. Always looking at the positives. That's something I love about you, Ian. It doesn't matter if we have bad days. You're always finding something to put a smile on my face. You did give out that Dortmund to finish top four, I believe plus 160, plus 150, somewhere in that range. And they're now three points ahead of Leipzig. A Leipzig side that has just been disappointing right now, man. It is hard for me to get a, write, a read on Leipzig at all with how they're playing. Yeah, Leipzig 0-0 at the weekend. They were pretty poor, and it was an opportunity for them to jump ahead. But with Borussia Dortmund getting that victory there, the table doesn't lie. They are three points clear of Leipzig, um, but they do still have some big games, Borussia Dortmund, yet to go. The other game I missed out on was Manchester City uh, against Arsenal. Of course, it was on Erling Haaland. Anytime goal score, it was plus 115 across multiple sportsbooks. The game finished 0-0. Um, it was fucking desperately disappointing, this game. Arsenal this season are only the fourth team to keep a clean sheet against the side managed by Pep Guardiola in two league matches in the same season. Borussia Mönchengladbach did it in 2014 15. United did it in 2021. And Crystal Palace have done it in 21 22. So, not many teams have managed to get that uh, clean sheet against Manchester City or Pep Guardiola sides, of course. Um, but that game itself, buckets real quickly, was fucking horrible to watch. And for everybody out there <laughs> betting, unless you were betting a draw, it was fucking miserable, man. It was terrible. And I'm glad that you said that because what I saw is not two teams that wanted to win, Ian. I saw two clubs that were desperate not to lose. And when you were trying to bet on goals, that is the worst kind of matchup you can bet on. Arsenal played for kind of that nil-nil, but City really didn't challenge them much at all. They dominated possession and had, what, one shot on target? Maybe two in the entire match. It was just a pitiful game from both sides. Props to Liverpool, the only real winners in that matchup. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We'll get onto that in just a quick second. But I really want to point out there that there was only three shots on target from both teams in that game. Arsenal played a masterclass defensively and Arteta's learning don't lose the title in this fucking game because if they got spanked, maybe they've lost the chances of winning the title because they got a point and they defended so fucking well. It was outstanding. I love defensive displays like that, even though um, as a bet or someone who enjoys uh, in the betting space, I, I want to see goals, I want to see action, and we certainly didn't get it right there. Um, but real quickly, Erling Haaland was criticized after that game, Buckets. He is obviously a killer goal scorer, but he was hammered by one Roy Keane, who was an incredible midfielder for my club, Manchester United. What a great player Roy Keane was. I met him a couple of times. He's a scary fucking man. But he jumped out and said, <laughs> Erling Haaland's play outside of the box, his uh, hold-up play, is that of a League Two player, which is a fourth division player. What do you think about Erling Haaland's game when he's not necessarily someone who's inside the penalty area scoring goals? Because he's absolutely world-class at doing that. But everything else, 
It's not great. It's not great. And I don't want to go against Roy Keane here. I think League Two might be a little bit disrespectful, but he is sure as hell not a Man City player when he is outside of the box. Amazing finishing. He's breaking all these kind of records. But you're right. On any kind of build-up play or when he's not getting something from KDB, he kind of looks a little bit lost. And we've seen him now time and time again not show up in the games in which City needed him most, whether that was the Champions League, whether that was, you know, cup play, whether that was just big matches against teams like Arsenal and Liverpool. Holland's the kind of guy to where he'll score four or five goals against the Crystal Palace, but he's done nothing consistently against teams that can play defense well like Arsenal. Yeah, listen, I was listening to uh, Talk Sport and Ali McCoy is on there, one of my favorite players growing up. He played for Rangers. He was a killer goal scorer, played for Sunderland as well. Um, he basically hey, for you. He basically jumped in and he said uh, he is a bang average striker. And I thought to myself, wow, that is a fucking strong comment from another striker to say that. But he also said he's a world-class finisher, which is a great comment to make. But I don't want Erling Haaland to think that he's got to change his game too much because what do we want? I would rather more have the goals that Erling Haaland gives us than him be able to hold up possession of the ball and flick it on and play this fancy style. Fuck that. Give me fucking goals. Give me a shit footballer outside the box and a world-class finisher inside the box all day, every day of the week. That's what City needed to win the Champions League. I am watching on Netflix out there as a documentary about Manchester City wow. going through their treble winning season. Fucking hell. I'm one season in. It's phenomenal. It's fucking phenomenal. So anybody out there, go watch it. Let us know what you think. If you have time, it's absolutely brilliant because it gives you an inside information as to how Pep Guardiola runs his ship and how important Erling Haaland was at that season and will be going into this season. Speaking of this season, let's talk futures. Of course, right now, uh, the Premier League is looking a bit tasty because there are some really good numbers here. Buckets in the futures. Liverpool plus 120 to win the Premier League. Manchester City are currently sitting at plus 200 right now to win the Premier League. Arsenal are sitting at plus 260 to win the Premier League. Obviously, it's between those three, um, but Buckets, I mean, there's money to be made right here. We do want to uh, obviously lean on the importance of betting responsibly, but maybe there's more than one unit I might place on one of these teams. Yeah, I'm looking at two teams in particular, and I'm sorry to my Arsenal fans and Arsenal supporters. I Hell of a season, tremendous year so far. It's not your season yet to win. I'm looking at Liverpool's maybe worth a sprinkle, but City at plus 200, I know that they're down on points. I know that they just had the blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. This is still Manchester City. This is still a team that has a healthy early Holland, whether he's a League Two player outside the box or not, that has the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, that has better backups than most team has starters, and they're only three points behind Liverpool right now. If Liverpool slips up a single time, City is going to feast on that. And I just think City at plus 200 is something that's, in my opinion, worth a play here, Ian. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I'm looking at the fixtures that are coming up for all of the teams. Obviously, um, big games coming up for every single one of those teams, including um, Liverpool, who have got to take care of business against um, Europa League uh, uh, opposition as well. Uh, Atalanta, I think they're playing in the Europa League. Arsenal are playing Bayern Munich in the Champions League. City are playing Real Madrid. So European contention also comes into play here. So let's not forget that they're going to have to rotate. But bet responsibly, but I would tease people out there to play more than one unit. I'd go two units on one of these here because whatever you feel, if it hits, I mean, these are numbers that you will never get, in my personal opinion, no. at this stage of a season, probably next year or for the next five years, because this is a unique race we have in the title campaign this year. So go ahead, choose your team, place a couple of units on there, have some fun, and let us know at the end of the season if you win. Uh, Buck, is you ready for some comments? Let's do it. All right, we've only got the 450 to go through today, so everybody strap on your seatbelts and enjoy the fucking ride. We got a Nico Svitkovic. Yeah, the fucking boys. Great show, guys. Tuning in while traveling for work makes it easier. Really love the flow of the bets and the depth you guys are going into. Thoughts on Liverpool now holding off City and Arsenal after mm. their draw? Fairy tale ending for Klopp. Keep up the good work, guys. Hashtag let's have it. Fairy tale ending for Klopp. Question for you, Buckets. My fairy tale ending for Klopp is that he's going to win Europa League. That'll be his last trophy. I just don't think he has it quite in him to win the Prem this year. As good offensively as they've been, I've got Liverpool finishing second. Stephen Tompkins jumping in and saying, Hot Coco said her MLS pick would be a steamy one. And my computer screen began to sweat profusely. But there was no sweating her prediction that Yakimakis would <laughs> score. Hot Coco knows the MLS like Buckets knows dancing. And Ian knows cursing. Keep him coming, Coco. <laughs> Hashtag have it. 
one more uh, section of love for our hot cocoa out there, Buckets, because the loyal listeners seem to be enjoying what she's producing. Yeah, there can never be enough love for hot cocoa, Ian. I think you messed with the viewers a little bit because we started the last show talking about the shower scene, and I think some people didn't actually watch the show past that. They got the first two minutes and commented, so a little biased there, but that's okay. Yeah, some of the viewers out there immediately uh, watching the show, and while they were three minutes into the show... Fucking hell, they were getting a bit nervous. Buckets, let's rattle through the campaigns. We go to Mark D. He said, the F-bombs are what make this show so fucking entertaining. Never stop by, PJ. Buckets, did I catch you, that was... I catch you off, off, off guard there? No it's, like, it's like 10 a.m., man. I was not ready for that. <laughs> There's no time here, Buckets. The show's oh. never ended. <laughs> Nobody knows what time we're recording this show. Uh, let's go to Jim in the country. He says, enjoying the show so far. Plenty of the bets. Uh, plenty of bets, but also entertaining on top of that. Keep up the good works. We go to Japan. Amazing show. Always a great time with you guys. We go to K. It's Kyle G. Like the new betting format, Ian. John doesn't really force picks, but still this shifts the focus more towards overall value rather than the day of the week. Don't have to try to pull a rabbit off the hat on those light days. I love my Kyle G, all right? He's one of the legends out there of the loyal listeners. Your thoughts on his comment? I love Kyle's comment because that's something that, again, goes in line with betting responsibly. Some people feel like you have to bet every day. And while we do do that very often here on the show, you don't have to do that. If I don't have a bet, I'll tell you. I don't like anything Tuesday. We'll always do that with you guys. I'm not sure how many times you said do that or do do that. You said that do, quite a lot there in that do, sentence. Do do that? Did I? We'll do that. Do that. We'll do that. Maybe do that. you don't have to do 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 that. Do anyway, that. let's get back into the comments there. Chris Hoyer, Hoyer coming in. Uh, Kirk, Kirk Royer. Excuse me. Kirk Schroyer. Uh, great show, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. Jay Cass. Great fucking show and great use of the word fuck. You like that? Okay. There's a lot of people out there who enjoy the word fuck and they also enjoyed the fact that producer Jeff had fun with that as well. Uh, Mama Buckets watched the last show and she said that she really appreciated the F counter. And she goes, do you think that'll make Ian stop cursing as much? And I said, no, it's going to motivate him. It's going to encourage him, if anything. Yeah, we're now on the over-under. I think it was 48 <laughs> yeah. uh, right there. Uh, we go to, um, don't even want to pronounce this name. I'm loving the producer picks here. That was Rhett Basi Mantuel. Um, I don't even know want to pronounce that name. Uh, yeah, definitely. Producer Jeff's picks out there are quite wild, so please bet responsibly with them. But at the same time, have some fun. Glad you're enjoying it. We go to Trophy Husband Training. Would love a Dortmund win so that the top four futures bet we all made together hits. Congratulations. You got it. Ross McLean. Is it the Ross McLean? My my good friend Ross McLean, get the bets on comments IPJ at the end of every video. What does that mean, buckets? Get the bets on comment at the end of every video. Yep. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, Ross. <laughs> fucking jump back in the comments there. <laughs> if it is my good friend Ross, he is a Scottish legend. Love to you, Ross. Uh, we go to C R G N S. Would love to see you guys betting on Swedish football and my team, your garden, with a new season starting in a few days. Love the show. Not Dolph Lundgren, by the way. That was an interesting comment right there. But Buckets, we could get into some Swedish bets. Let's do that soon. You up for that? Absolutely. I love the Swedish league. All right, let's go to Alvaro. IPJ, I was thinking more like Tom Cruise. What do you think? Buckets, Tom Cruise? Could I pull that up? You're a much younger Tom Cruise. But yeah, you probably could. Very true. He's like 60 now, isn't he? Fucking hell, I'm not far away from 60. Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, we've got Mego Mego jumping in and saying, fuck, I want a shower now. You thinking about my wife, Mego Mego? <laughs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Let's go to sites. I'm here for Buckets' embarrassment. We jump into Thomas Marshall. Great show as always. From top to bottom, sheer entertainment. We go to KC123MD. Congrats to Ian on the shower. Like, comment, <laughs> and subscribe for the boys. Great show, fellas, says Chef Strick Svaden. When we've got uh, Jared jumping in and saying, boys, I'd love to give you two tickets to a CT CLT FC game, Charlotte FC Ooh. game. Got two tickets in the supporter section with your guys' names on it as a thank you for creating a great show, a supportive community, and a place to cash tickets. Buckets, you up for that? Yeah, I'm down. Let me know what week. We'll go. Producer Jeff probably not too happy that it said only two tickets right there because producer oh. Jeff loves a game and he also loves a pint and he also loves fucking getting in the supporter section. So, you know, I would imagine once I mention this, fucking Hot Coco is going to want to be there as well. So, uh, Jared, if you have four tickets, let us know. We'll be there. Uh, now, this was a really interesting one to wrap things up here. We've got Zach jumping in and he says, 
I know Ian was the most fun teammate to have. Now, Buckets, you've been working with me for about a year right now. Um, as far as the media goes, like what kind of a teammate am I to you? Uh, I would agree 100% with that. It's a very passionate, very caring, very fun to be around, very explosive personality. I, I got to imagine you were similar on the pitch, yeah? Well, you know what? Let's find out. I asked some of my former teammates oh. to send in a video of what I was <laughs> like as a former teammate. You may want to uh, tune out Mama Buckets right about now. Let's find out. So here is a couple of my former teammates and um, here's their response. Hey guys, my name is John Borgo, former teammates of uh, Ian at FC St. Pauli. Ian asked me to do a quick video on how he was as a teammate. So first and foremost, uh, Ian had that winning mentality. He had that willingness and he brought that energy on and off the field. I'm pretty sure you can see it uh, on the show. Uh, he was someone that was pushing himself on a positive way. And for me back then as a young player, he was an inspiration figure someone that you wanted to fight with and to go into the battlefield with. And one little last thing, Ian was a left back, so a strong defender, physical. So if you were able to pass him 1v1, I can tell you something. It was the last time because Ian was right back at it. So, and one little last thing also, have it. Shout out to Coco also for her uh, picks uh, last weekend. Enjoy the show. Ian Joy was one of the best teammates I ever had in my life. He was a fucking animal on the pitch. I was really happy to have him on my team because you can count on him on every single second. On the locker room he was a really funny guy and on the third half of the game, like <laughs> in some pups, he was unbeatable as well. I always like the time with him. Thanks a lot for that. Man, Ian Joy is a teammate, the Joy Boy. What an honor to play with that guy, one of my favorite teammates of all time. Not the most talented, not very athletic, kind of ran like a penguin a little bit, bit of a waddle. But when the going got tough, man, he was always there, always accountable, competitive, hated to lose, absolutely hated to lose. Sexy left foot, funny fake Scottish accent, dependable, reliable. Great guy. Joy boy, love ya. I have 20 seconds to tell you how bad of a teammate Ian Joy was to play with. You gotta be kidding me. I need a freaking hour. But I will say that he was probably one of the most loyal guys I ever played with. He was always a fighter. He always had good banter in the locker room. He always had my back when the chips were down. That's what I loved about him. Uh, he was also a bit of a nightmare as a roommate. I'll tell you that much because uh, he's always up. He's always chatting, always calling people back in Scotland. And I never got any sleep. Otherwise, I love him. Fucking legendary. A couple of my teammates right there. A few of my teammates, multiple of my teammates right there. Everybody out there. Of course, you, I hope you enjoyed those videos. And the introduction into my life, just that little bit more there. Jonathan Borgo, my best friend from Montreal. Florian Lechner from St. Pauli. He was a right back. I was a left back. Just great human beings. We won a championship together in Germany. Uh, John is still my best friend. Now we fucking see. I saw him this past weekend. We we see each other regularly. He went on to play for Canada. Um, just absolute great human beings. And of course, you could hear Hear the love from them and appreciate all the love then we've got will johnson who's a fucking nightmare by the way of a teammate by the way. when he when he rolled up will johnson rolled up to training in a 1969 chevy i don't even know what kind of i think it was a toyota and it was like fucking three wheels on it this thing and i thought to myself like what the fuck i'm rolling up in a nice audi just looking fucking you know, no, this guy's got a fucking degree. I think he's got his master's degree right now. Oh. He two times, two time MLS championship, played 45 times for his country, Canada. Um, and I don't know how he did it. One of the worst footballers I've ever seen, especially in training. <laughs> he couldn't even run properly, Will Johnson. But I know he's a big loyal listener out there and love of you, Will. What a great fucking teammate he was. And then we finished with the, the one you just saw there, the last one. Not fucking Borchers, okay? Now, when I went to Real Salt Lake, I was going through some shit, right? So he got some shit. He definitely got some shit because I was going through divorce and then I met Heart Coco and it was fucking mental, right? It was mayhem in my life. Borchers rolls up. Didn't have that horrible beard, by the way, when he rolled up. He rolls up trying to teach me about fucking investing, buying property. And I'm just like trying to get through my days. I'm just trying to figure out life. So I'm rolling up there, putting 25 beers in the fucking bathtub and he's rolling up and I'm thinking I can change this fucking guy. All right. Very quickly. 
not even four weeks into preseason, he couldn't wait to get off training to get into the fucking bathtub so he could crack open another beer. We had a great fucking great, great time as a roommate partnership. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, Borchers, of course, went on to win two MLS Cups as well. But that fucking beard is horrendous. <laughs> absolutely horrendous. There's no way that would have lasted when he was my roommate. I would have fucking trimmed that right through the night. That would have been gone. I would have shaved half of that thing off and left the other half so that he had another option but to shave the rest of the goddamn beard. But um, all of them, brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing. And I know Willie's a massive loyal listener and someone who, who likes to place a wager now as well. So um, great human beings, every single one of them as well. Buckets, your thoughts on uh, Borchers and the boys? Uh, Borchers and the boys, love all of them, man. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, the kind of people that you surround yourself with and have in the past, it says a lot about your character as an individual as well. And it looks like, for the most part, I'm not going to single anyone out. You were surrounded by a bunch of great guys when you were playing. So I love to see that. You know, my mantra here, and producer Jeff will be able to back me up on this, is that if you create a great environment, the product itself will be fucking great. And it's the same on the field as it is in the studio. And it doesn't change for me in life. No matter what setting you go into, if you make people's day better and you try to make them the best they possibly can be, you have a chance that your product will be better as well. And it's been the same working with Jeff now for fucking eight, nine, oh, fucking almost 10 years. And then also doing our show with you, Buckets, like you see it, create an environment. I do the same at the Galato Network, create an environment, make sure people have everything they need to be the best version of themselves. And if they are, eventually the product will be fucking great as well. Buckets, I want to just uh, show you this clip because I caught, this caught my attention actually this past weekend. I was watching the game between Rangers and Hibernian. Um, everybody out there, the loyal listeners, take a look at this. This is fucking happens very quickly, but it's also pretty fucking crazy. This is Nick Torrios Triantes. He accidentally leaves his teammate, Joe Newell and Will. F <laughs> he, got pulled. he hit both of his teammates after fucking zinging the ball at them. He knocked them over, taking his quick free kick. Look, boom, right off the head. And it bounced back and hit his other teammate off the head. Both of them went down. I mean, this was absolutely hilarious. It happened in the Hibernians 3-1 defeat against Glasgow Rangers, but Catching this was something spectacular. I have actually experienced being hit in the head with a ball, and it's not fucking nice whatsoever, so I feel the pain right there. But, Buck, it's hard not to laugh at this. It's hard not to laugh, and it goes back and hits the first guy again after the second guy. So he pinballed three times back and forth. It's it's tough not to laugh, especially when you see, I think that was blood at the end there. But, I mean, come on. That I mean, I'm sure this is just part of the game, but that's funny as hell, man. <laughs> It's absolutely hilarious. I mean, some of these videos oh. that you see, I've watched this fucking 300 times. And the more I watch this video, the more I fucking laugh. It's absolutely brilliant. So, of course, uh, Rangers went on to win the game 3 1. Hibernian were embarrassed not only by the defeat, but embarrassed by uh, that right there. I'll tell you the truth, though. Uh, I was a rookie at Trammy Rovers. I got hit in the back of the head by a shot from one of my teammates, Perry Taylor, uh, who had a lethal right foot. And it fucking knocked me out. I was unconscious. I was out for about five minutes. Yeah, man. I was out cold. And um, all I remember is like waking up. I was in the fucking locker room. I was like, what the fuck? I had to go to hospital and everything, just getting knocked out of the ball. It was like someone threw a brick right in the back of my head. But dangerous, yeah. And now you know why kids in the United States of America are not allowed to head soccer balls under the age of 12. Buckets, oh. you ready? I you didn't, didn't know that. that. No, I had no idea that was a thing. I guess, I mean, I've never really played anything competitively. I don't, it makes sense that a header is going to hurt every time, right? Wait a minute. You've never played anything competitively? I, 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 I in a Sunday beer league, I played goalie, but that's, <laughs> they, the only reason I did that was because it's smaller goals. And they said, you're the size of the damn goal. Just stand there with your arms and wave. So I just do this for 45 minutes a week. That is competitive uh, soccer. Just going to throw it out there. <laughs> Our loyal listeners do the same thing, Buckets. All right, let's get to the Bundesliga whip around. You ready? Oh, yes, I've missed this. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Bundesliga match day 28. Let's look at the top of the table. Leverkusen, 73 points. Bayern Munich, 60 points. Uh, Stuttgart doing so well, 57 points. Dortmund on 53 points. And just outside the top four is Leipzig on 50 points. In the bottom half of the table, it's getting really interesting right now. Darmstadt are pretty much screwed. They're down. Cologne are fighting for their lives, but it's between them and Mainz as to who will be going down automatically. Bochum seem to be looking like they're going to escape it on 26 points. And then there's some teams down there who are struggling right now. Gladbach are shit. 
Wolfsburg are shit. <laughs> Union Berlin, they were in the Champions League. They're shit this year. Like, it's absolutely crazy. But you got to compliment what Heidenheim are doing this season. Sitting on 11th spot, 30 points. And they've got a big game this week as we take a look at the fixtures against the mighty Bayern Munich. On Friday, it starts with Frankfurt against Werder Bremen. And then I mentioned that game, Heidenheim against Bayern Munich on Saturday. Cologne against Bochum. That's a big game at the bottom of the table. Freiburg against Leipzig. Mainz against Darmstadt. Another bottom of the table clash. Union Berlin against Leverkusen. Good luck in that game. Dortmund against Stuttgart, which is probably the game of the weekend. And then it goes to Sunday. Hoffenheim against Augsburg. Wolfsburg against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Buckets, I want every single scoreline prediction from you, please. And then we'll go through our player to watch at the end. All right, everyone, get out your pencils and your notepad here because I'm going to rapid fire through all of these just hidden every scoreline prediction. I'm starting with a 2-1 victory for Frankfurt over Werder Bremen and then a 2 or 3-2 victory for Leipzig over Freiburg. I've got Mainz Darmstadt as a 2-2 draw. No winner there. Cologne versus Bochum. Ian, I'm actually going for the Cologne victory. 1-0. I think it's going to be tough, but I got them getting out of here still. Bayern Music, Munich versus Heidenheim. Don't bet it. Just don't do it. Don't. It's not worth it. 2-0 Bayern Munich. I have no idea. Leverkusen, Union Berlin, 4-1 Leverkusen. The smackdowns continue. Dortmund, Stuttgart, 3-3 draw. That one's going to be very fun for me. Hoffenheim versus Augsburg. I'm looking at 3-1 Augsburg. And then Wolfsburg versus Gladbach, 1-1 draw, Ian. Boom. Producer Jeff hates you, man. First of all, you said Leverkusen are going to celebrate in front of the yellow wall. Now you're going for a 3-3 draw at home against Stuttgart. Fucking hell. There's no love for... The mighty Borussia Dortmund or that yellow wall. By the way, me and producer Jeff have, of course, everybody out there knows we spent time in front of that yellow wall. It's fucking frightening, man. It's unbelievable. That wall itself is just like, it's like a never ending row of supporters and how steep it is. Like my dream now is to actually go, it's on my bucket list to go with producer Jeff and go and stand in the yellow wall, which is almost impossible to do because it's all season ticket holders. It's almost impossible to get in there. You can sit everywhere else and you can sit in the posh seats and you can eat prawn sandwiches with all the snobby fuckers. But I like to go and sit with the real fans and I would love to do that in the ultra section as well. Would you be up for it though? I know you're a Bayern fan, but would you be up for it? Oh, dude, I'd be so down. You got to remember the most intense environment I've been to in the footballing world is a Nashville SC game. So anything I do is going to blow that out of the water, I'm sure. But that'd be so much fun. Shout out to Nashville fans out there. They got a good thing going as well. Just yeah, need to do. get their team sorted out on the pitch. All right, I'm going for Frankfurt 3, Werder Bremen 2, Heidenheim 1, Bayern Munich 5. Oh, yes. Ugh. I'm going for Freiburg, Freiburg 2, Leipzig 2, Cologne 2, Bochum. No, I'm with you, Buckets. Yes. Union Berlin 1, Leverkusen 3, Mainz 3, Darmstadt 1, Borussia Dortmund 2. Sorry, Jeff. Stuttgart, too. I'm going for the draw as well. <laughs> Hoffenheim, three. Augsburg, one. Wolfsburg, three. Gladbach, one. And then I'm going to go for my player to watch buckets because I really want to hear where you're going here. I'm going to an unusual one. I'm a Mainz player here. Jonathan Burkhart to score. is 400. Uh, 14 appearances so far this season. Four goals to his name. 23-year-old. Very good player. Caught my attention most recently. He's got two goals in his last home game versus Bochum. He got one game in the game before that against Gladbach, also at home. So he seems to be a player who enjoys scoring goals at home buckets your thoughts on my predictions my player to watch and then give me your player to watch you gave me shit for saying that Dortmund was gonna draw and then you immediately gave out a Dortmund draw that's my thoughts on your prediction I for the most part we're on the same page as most of, don't reel me in put that down we're actually on the same match too for the player that we're gonna watch I'm also on mine's Darmstadt but I'm looking at the other end of the pitch as you mentioned Darmstadt is pretty much done already but I think they've got maybe a little fight in them. And if they don't as a team, maybe Tim Skark does because he has been the one that has been trying his best to keep this Darmstadt team alive. Only eight goals on the season, but that's twice, more than two times anyone else on this club right now. He's currently plus 280 to score. Again, these are just sprinkles, but he's someone that I think might do something this weekend. Buck, is you ready for the rebound? <sighs> we need it. Let's do it. It is time for the best bets. You know, it wouldn't be a show of up it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that wasn't a good start. Well, you know, I said it perfectly last week. We had 17 bets and fucked up. So maybe because I fucked up this time, we're going to have a clean slate of bets. You know, it wouldn't be a show of stoppage time without the best bets from our betting expert. Yes, of course. That is, of course, John Buckets. Imer. welcome back, Buckets. This is time 
where you go on the fucking run. I want seven best bets from you, Buckets. Not six, not 17, not 11. I want seven <laughs> from you. I want Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Sorry, Kyle, but this is the way we're going. Next Tuesday and Wednesday, though, I have a caveat. That bet must come from the Champions League. And even if you don't have the line jacks, I know there's not a lot of player prop bets and things like that out there. If you don't have the line you're looking for, at least give me a look as to where you are leaning. So let Let's begin with your best bet for Thursday. And I'll also add to your buckets. If you want to throw more than seven bets, feel free to do so. Let's go to Thursday. All right, let's start Thursday off with a plus odds winner here, Ian. I'm looking at the EPL clash between Liverpool and Sheffield United, a.k.a. David and Goliath, except in this universe, or David, that's right, just gets ran over. My goodness, this Sheffield team is embarrassing. 77 goals conceded so far this season. Liverpool's only scored 67, so Sheffield is doing worse than Liverpool is doing well, if that makes any sense. But it was hard to find value in this game, unless if you want to bet on Liverpool to score 40 goals. So what I've done is I found a plus 110 player prop. We all know Mo Salah. We know that he is currently the top goal scorer for this team. That's fine. His goal scoring odd right now is currently minus 200. But did you also know that Mo Salah has the most assists on Liverpool? And him to have an assist in this matchup is plus 110. That's where I'm going because I think Liverpool might score three, four, five, six goals here. Salah probably will score. But I do think he grabs an assist here as well. This is the kind of matchup to where this team could just run over Sheffield. And Mo Salah should play a big role in that. Yeah, Mo Salah is leading the way for score and assist for Liverpool this campaign. 16 goals, 9 assists in 23 matches that he's played in the Premier League. Let's not forget that he also disappeared to the AFCON uh, for a period of time, came back fucking injured, so missed a lot of games. And now all of a sudden he's back and he's back scoring goals. This past weekend he scored against Brighton. He also scored against Manchester United on March 17th. And then uh, if you'll remember rightly, Buckets, and it's probably the reason why you're taking this bet, he had three assists in that Europa League game against Sparta Prague and also got a goal and I think if I'm not mistaken that was his comeback game uh, maybe it wasn't his comeback game but brilliant to see him back scoring and assisting so love that bet he's either going to score or assist in this game but I wouldn't put it past him doing both in this game plus he is also my captain on my fantasy team hold on hold on hold on I'll take it over here please I'll take it over here hot cocoa just delivered the goods buckets hot cocoa just delivered the goods look hot cocoa delivering the goods oh look at it's that not a it's not a hot cocoa, it's a cup of tea, but I'll definitely take it. I just asked her if she wanted to come say hi to loyal listeners, and unfortunately for all you loyal listeners out there, she is um, off the clock until later on in the show. Buckets, that's a great bet. Love to hear it. Let's go to Friday. Friday, we are back with the Svein Bundesliga, baby. Let's go to the second Bundesliga in Germany, and let's look at a matchup that I think a lot of people are going to overlook here, Ian. I'm looking at the game between Paderborn and Hertha. I'm looking at a matchup between ninth on the table versus, I believe, I'm going to double check this, eighth on the table. Two clubs that pretty much can't get promoted. They can't get relegated. They're just kind of hanging out. They're having a good time, but they're still playing very, very competitive football. And my word, are they still scoring a shit ton of goals? Pretty much as long as neither of these teams have played St. Pauli, they're doing really well as both of these clubs did struggle against the mighty St. Pauli. But when you're looking at Hertha's recent matches, 2-2 to Holstein Kiel, 2-0 lost to St. Pauli. There we go. 5-2 win over Schalke, 3-3 over Nuremberg. This is a team that absolutely refuses to play defense. They have 46 goals conceded in their 27 games, but they've scored 53. Meanwhile, Paderborn coming off of back-to-back -back losses and a really poor run in general, but again, scoring goals and conceding. So this game, I'm actually taking two separate bets for the same matchup, and I'm putting one unit on each of them. I'm taking Paderborn over one and a half team total at minus 135, and I'm also taking Hertha over one and a half team total at plus 110. When they played in the reverse fixture, Hertha did win that matchup 3-1, but even that was a game that probably should have been closer to a 5-2, 5-3 scoreline. These are just two teams that when they clash in, all I want to do is bet on goals. Love this bet, love this play, love the fact that you're taking an interesting way of placing a wager on this one as well. Why are you doing so? I'm doing so because this was the only way that I was able to find value in how I wanted to play it. If you took both teams to score and over two and a half, it was minus 195. And so rather than do that, the books obviously think at least one team is going to score twice. I think there's a good chance both do. But as long as one does, you're kind of saving yourself a little bit in a worst case scenario.
fucking love it, Buckets. You're always educating our people out there. Win or lose, we don't lose. We always learn. And that's the way you have to follow Buckets. He doesn't lose. He learns and he improves and he finds ways and he finds values. And all of a sudden, he comes back. Just out of curiosity, how did you do last month yourself? Were you up? Were you down? Because it was a very difficult month to place wagers on. It was a very difficult month. And March was actually my best month of the new year so far. January and February were very slow for me. But March, I ended up north of just under 20 units of uh, ROI being positive in the green. So that's a great feeling, especially when soccer, as you mentioned, it just feels very tricky right now. But we're still finding value for everyone. I ended up 12 units for the month. But like I said, it was a stressful month. I think half of the month I was down and half the month I was up. And that's why I'm taking a break because sometimes you have to read and listen and learn and make sure you take a break for your mental, but also just the way you do you games more than anything else. I started to chase a, a little bit, which I didn't like doing. And I don't mean chasing my bets, but just I'm looking at games differently that's what i mean by chasing it like i'm watching games differently i didn't want to do that so that's why i'm taking a bit of a break because i want to make sure i still have that love and that energy for games regardless i don't need to have a wager on a game to enjoy it basically um buckets absolutely love that bet do you want to hear a little cool story about paderborn yes let's do it <clears throat> so paderborn back in the day were playing in the lower leagues and they were in the third division i think it was a regional league at the time used to play them quite regularly played them against them in the second division as well in the second Bundesliga. um but at one point there was negotiations between my agent and paderborn about potentially making a move down there and at that point obviously i was just making a living i wasn't doing anything other than just making a living um but I like signing bonuses. And when you make a move, you can get an opportunity to make, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000, whatever it is, signing bonus. So I thought maybe I'll entertain an offer. So I thought, okay, let me entertain it. And um, they made an interesting signing bonus. They said, we don't have any cash to give you, but we do have a furniture warehouse that you can go in and choose anything you'd like. I thought, what the fuck? <laughs> So if I send for your club, I don't get any cash, but I can take all the furniture I want. I thought, oh, fair enough, I'll entertain this offer. But I thought it was very interesting to see the fact that players were going there knowing that they didn't have money. So every other player I thought going in there, I thought, I bet their living room looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> the things you see in the lower leagues of uh, the beautiful game, I let's go to that. Saturday. That's, I absolutely love that. That's the kind of de deal that I would take if I had someone with me to look at that. I need a wife or something to say, hey, Go have fun. This is all for you. I, that's amazing. But not as amazing, Ian, as our Saturday wager, where we're once again going back to the EPL, baby. I'm looking at the matchup between Luton Town and Bournemouth. And when you see me bet Luton Town, you know damn well there's only one thing I'm going to do in that game. And that's bet on goals. Because as we've mentioned a thousand times on the show, watching Luton Town play is a thing of beauty. Because this is a team that, like a lot of teams right now, just don't give a shit. They're in a relegation battle. They're 18th on the table with 22 points right now, but they've scored 43 goals in 30 matches. Defense, non-existent. 62 goals conceded, but this is a team that they could be down 4-0, and they're still pressing just as hard as if they were up 1-0. This is a team that does not slow down. Taking on a Bournemouth side that is 11th on the table, they're doing pretty well. They're finding form. But again, looking at Bournemouth's recent fixtures, they beat Crystal Palace 1-0. They beat Everton 2-1. Luton Town 4-3 last time they played. Sheffield United 2-2. This is a team where defense is not the priority. I'm taking both teams to score and over two and a half goals in this one, Ian. It's minus 140, so a little bit of juice, but you could do the exact same thing I did with Paderborn. You could take both teams on their team totals if you'd rather split that up and play a different way here. Yeah, this is an interesting tie. Obviously, it finished four goals to three the last time they played it. But if I'm not mistaken, wasn't there a problem in one of the games at Bournemouth recently when it was cancelled, when Lockyer had a heart attack on the field again? I think it was like 10 minutes into the game. They had to stop the game, obviously, to look yeah. after their player Lockyer, who's now out. But I love this bet because it finished 4-3 the previous game in the championship, finished 3-2. Previous game to that also in the championship, finished 2-1. Listen, love it. Um, obviously, as the table positions right now, as we record, Buckets pointed out right now, that Luton are on 22 points, but they do have a game coming up today as we record. They're playing Arsenal tonight. So by the time that hits, they're probably still on fucking 22 <laughs> points because let's face it, they're playing fucking Arsenal. But at the same time, they're in a battle against Nottingham Forest to get away from this relegation. Um, Everton could also get dragged into it as well. But Luton are a team. I love it. They just need to get healthy again. They're missing too many players at this moment yeah. in time. Let's go to your best bet for Sunday. Sunday, we're going to Italy's Siri. Ah, Ian, and I've got another fun one because it's a team that I used to not be able to pronounce that now, because I'm always learning and getting better, I, there's a 50-50 shot. I got this. We're looking at the match between Cagliari and Atalanta. Ooh, 
Good job, Buckets. This is noon on Sunday, and it's going to be a good one because we've got two teams battling for different things here. Atalanta is sixth on the table, and they're fighting desperately to at least get into that fifth Europa spot. Obviously, they want to hit top four, but it's tough for them right now being seven points behind Bologna. Meanwhile, Cagliari are fighting just to stay out of relegation. 27 points, only two points ahead of Empoli. So both of these teams have something to play for. But I'm backing the fact that Atalanta is a team that just scores a ton of goals. And they are coming off of a couple really big wins here. Looking at their last two fixtures, they beat Napoli 3-0 on the road. They traveled to Napoli and beat the piss out of these guys. And before that, they took down... I want to make sure I'm right here. Yes, they beat Sporting 2-1 in Europa League to stay in that. This is a team that is scoring goals consistently against the best teams in all of Italy right now, against Juventus, against Napoli, not against Inter, but against teams that a lot of other teams struggle against. Meanwhile, Cagliari, they do have a lot to play for. This is a team that is capable of pulling out some weird results, but I just don't think they have it in them right now to beat an inform Atalanta side. To get the juice down, I'm taking a same-game parlay of Atalanta money line. And over one and a half goals. If you just played Atalanta over one and a half, that's minus 165. If you had the money line to it, it brings it down over to minus 105, Ian. Almost even money now for a team that I do think wins this one 2 1, 3 1, 4 1 kind of game. Love this bet because I feel like Atalanta are going to have to score more than one goal to win that game. Cayore, both teams to score possibly could hit in this game. Cayore are fighting for their lives and doing a great job getting away from that relegation zone. So this game, you got to be very, very careful. But I do like it because Atalanta are playing well. They have a habit of switching off, though, in random games, Atalanta, which scares yeah. me just that little bit. So you've always got to be careful. I'm a bit disappointed in your buckets because we've got Rangers against Celtic at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, which is a banger <sighs> of a game at the top of the table. We also have Manchester United against Liverpool at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, which is another fucking banger of a game. I thought maybe you would go there, but you decided to stay away. I decided to stay away. I'm not good at betting Man United in general. They're one of those clubs that every time I bet the over, it ends 0-1. Every time I bet the under, it ends 7-2. I just can't get a read on them. And Rangers Celtic, as you mentioned earlier, that's a game I'll be waking up to watch, but I don't want to bet on that game. I want to be able to enjoy that as a fan of the sport for 90 minutes. And sometimes, for instance, if I had Celtic to score twice, if Celtic went up 2-0 early, my motivation to watch the game sometimes goes away, and I don't want to lose that for a match like that. Top of the table right now in the Scottish Premiership. Celtic on 74 points, played 31 games. Rangers played one game less on 73 points. Rangers, of course, at home against Celtic. So that is a banger of a game. And we have a title race on in Scotland as well. All right, let's go to your best bet for Monday. We've got one more on Sunday first. I th no, you're right, Monday. Why do I try to question you? Let's go to Monday and let's go to another Serie A matchup here, Ian. And I think that you and most people won't like this one, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. I'm looking at the game between Udinese and Inter Milan. I'm looking at Udinese and Inter Milan, and I'm actually taking both teams to score at plus 100. And why people won't like that is because Udinese is averaging less than one goal score per game with 29 over 30, and Inter Milan has one of the best defenses, not only in Italy, but in all of Europe, with only 14 goals conceded in 30 games. However, this Udinese side... For whatever reason, I don't know if it makes sense. Maybe it does to you. They draw. This is not a team that loses very often. It's not a team that wins very often. This is a team that in 30 matches has 16 draws on the table. This is a team that thrives for their 1-1, that thrives for their 2-2. This is a team that will always match you for a goal, and they'll either draw or to a team like Inter, they will lose. If you look at the recent fixtures, 1-1 to Sassuolo. They had a 2-1 victory over Lazio. 1-1 to Salernitana. 1-1 to Cagliari. This is a team that just... Plays just well enough, Ian, to get a point. And while I don't think they'll get that full point off of Inter, I do think they'll at least get a goal here. I also think that Inter might be a little bit distracted, maybe. When they played Empoli, they won 2-0, but Empoli had 14 shots. Empoli is a terrible team, and they still almost scored. And for whatever reason, Ian, maybe it's my gut here, I think Udinese get it done. Inter are chasing the title, and they're chasing that second star above their badge, which means they all have won the title for the 20th time, which is incredible. Um, I think they win. At the same time, the stats for Udinese are absolutely unbelievable. I'm glad you pointed it out, because I'm looking at it now. Buckets, at home, they've played 15 games. They've won one. They've yep. drawn nine, <laughs> yeah. and they've lost only five. So you're right to point out, draw, draw, draw. But they've scored 17, conceded 23. So scoring and conceding certainly hits home and away. Away from home, they've only scored 12 and conceded 22. But they've won three games on the road from 15 and also drawn seven. It's ridiculous. 
ridiculous how many games they've actually drawn. As I'm looking at it right now, sitting 14th in the table on 28 points, they are well and truly in a relegation battle. I mean, it's crazy what's happening in Italy at the bottom of the table right now. But they have won only four games. The only team to win less than them is bottom team Salernitana, who've won only two games all season long from 30. So to have won only four games is absolutely insane and still be out of the relegation battle. But right now, if you look at what's happening in Italy, 13th place Lecce are on 29 points. 19th place Sassuolo, who are in the relegation <laughs> zone, are on 24. There's a five-point gap right there between seven clubs. Any of them could get relegated, and that includes Udinese, which helps me lean on you just that little bit more that they can try to score goals and at least get something from this game. Love your look, love your research, love the way you do it. Let's go to Tuesday. Now, here we go. Before we get into Tuesday, the games coming up, of course, this bet has to come from the Champions League. Arsenal against Bayern Munich, Real Madrid against Manchester City on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, it will be Atletico Madrid against Dortmund, PSG against Barcelona. So let's begin with your best bet for Tuesday. <sighs> I'm so nervous. And I'm, I'll am i tell you everybody right now, I'm not betting the Bayern Munich game. Maybe we'll have something special on social, but that is not going to be my best bet here. I'm looking at that match between Real Madrid and Manchester City. I got to leave my heart and my emotions out of this because I want to make you guys as much money as possible. When I'm looking at this tie between these two clubs, I think this is the kind of tie to where home field advantage is going to mean everything. When you're playing at Real Madrid, you're playing at the Bernabeu. That's just a tough place to go. And this is a team that has Champions League heritage. Real Madrid and Champions League is a combination like no other. So when they're playing at home in the first leg, frankly, I don't care that Man City is their opponent. I don't care that Man City are the favorites in this matchup. I don't care about any of that. The only thing I care about is that Real Madrid draw no bet, Ian, is plus one zero five in the first leg. I think Worst case scenario for the Madridistas, worst case scenario for Real Madrid, they end this game in a draw. Maybe it's a crazy 3-3 shootout. Maybe it's another kind of Arsenal KG nil-nil. But there's no way you can give me plus odds on Real Madrid with that safety net of the draw there. And a leg that I do think they win outright, but worst case scenario, Ian, they're not going to lose at home. No chance. That's crazy. Crazy line. I don't, it really I don't is. like it. I mean, it's crazy to think that what can happen in these first legs, obviously the first legs are very important, but no away goals now it makes it an entertaining game. You just got to go and score more goals. So Real Madrid at home in front of their own supporters, I would imagine we're going to go for Manchester City. And if you look at what happened this past weekend, Arsenal defended against Manchester City and they found a game plan that worked. But I don't think Real Madrid can do that. They're an offensive-minded team. If you open up yourself and go for goals, you can leave yourself vulnerable defensively. And that's where City, I think, can score goals. So I still think City can score in this game, but I do believe that Real Madrid can absolutely win that first leg and make the second leg such a tasty affair. Uh, team Futures right now, Manchester City plus 175 are favorites to win the Champions League. Real Madrid are plus 650 to win the oh. Champions League. Buckets, Bayern Munich right now to win the Champions League are currently setting at plus 700. Can I get a scoreline prediction from you for that game against Arsenal away from home in the first leg? Away from home in the first leg, I'm actually going to go 2-1 to the Gunners here. I think Arsenal went at home, but then you've got to go to Allianz and play against what I hope is a pissed off Bayern Munich side in that second mm. leg. All right, let's go to your best bet for Wednesday. Atletico Madrid against Dortmund, PSG against <sighs> Barcelona. I would like to apologize in advance to producer Jeff. Jeff, I love you. I respect you. I know you already hate me this episode, so we might as well just get all the hate out of the way in one segment. I'm looking at the matchup between Atletico Madrid versus Dortmund. And again, home field advantage is everything. In the second leg, when they do play it at Dortmund at the yellow wall, it's going to be a nightmare. But Atletico Madrid, like we talked about time and time again, Ian, when they play at home, my word, is this a better team than when they play on the road? Atletico Madrid, something about the home environment, the fans, everything. This is a team that is almost undefeated at home this season. And I think that Dortmund on the road will not have enough to stop them. I'm not taking Atleti to win, but I am going to take Atletico Madrid over one and a half goals team total, Ian. That's almost even odds as well. Minus 105 for Atleti to score two. Because in my mind, Atletico's gameplay or game plan is going to be win at home, survive on the road. And if you're going to win at home against Dortmund, you got to score at least two goals to make that happen. 
Listen, I'm with you. I think Atletico Madrid knock Borussia Dortmund out, but the way Borussia Dortmund played this weekend certainly makes me hesitate my decision. I mean, Dortmund were fantastic this past weekend, and that was the best performance I'd seen them play. So if they can start to string together performance after performance, there's every possibility of them being able to get a result against Atletico Madrid. So I'm really intrigued to see what happens there. And Dortmund can score against Atleti. Don't, don't be fooled here. Atletico Madrid are an offensive-minded team right now. They previously were a defensive-minded team under Simeone, but now they're offensive-minded. So that game could be a free-flown banger. So, uh, producer Jeff, feel free to put your scoreline prediction on that game <laughs> right about now. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, you, ready? you ready for my best bet this weekend? Yep, let's hear it. I'm so glad that you went to Serie A multiple times this past weekend because I feel like sometimes we neglect Serie A. And do you know what's happening this weekend in Serie A? What's that? It's the Rome Derby. So this best bet is called the Roman Banger. Roma Lazio. (laughs) Yes, Roma on the money line, plus 110. Lazio plus 255. My best bet for this weekend is Roma on the money line, plus 110 across multiple sports books right about now. And I would imagine that line will change very quickly as we get closer and closer to kickoff. This is obviously a huge game in Italy, and I feel like it's time for Serie A to get some love from stoppage time. And that's why Buckets obviously went there and also for myself as well. Let's dive into the stats just that little bit more to see why we're going for this get game and bet. Roma, fifth place in the league right now. Won 15, drawn seven, lost eight, scored an impressive 55, conceded 35. Roma at home, won 10, lost only two, scored 35, let in 15 goals. Yes, I know it's a derby game, but Roma will be a home team. And I guess with Daniele De Rossi in charge of this club, it is going to be his first ever Roman derby as a manager, which is absolutely insane. Under De Rossi, since he took over Roma, they have been pretty spectacular. They have earned 23 points in Serie A. In his first 10 games as Roma head coach, De Rossi is only the second coach to achieve such a number. Uh, De Francesco's opening 10 matches got 24. Uh, Rudy Garcia got 30, so only two coaches had better records in their history in their first 10 games. De Rossi's current track record is seven wins, two draws, one loss in Serie A. It's absolutely impressive what he is doing for the Giallo Rossi. Lazio, they've been a pretty average team so far, um, but they're still chasing a European place right now, so don't rule them out. It is a derby game, so anything can happen. They're seventh in the table, one fourteen, lost 12. Away from home, I know it's a home game, but it's still, they are the away team. They've won seven, they've lost seven, which is not too bad. Castellanos is the guy I watched there, but he's not playing too much, so mobley has been getting the nod. Um, head-to-head, Roma have not won the derby in the last four which is really interesting to me in fact they didn't score in any of those four defeats which is really interesting to me i am going for roma to spank lazio in this game lukaku dubala to score watch out for pellegrini as well he's been brilliant under de rossi but de rossi is where it's at for me i fucking love his style i love his passion i absolutely love who he was as a player but don't forget as i mentioned before this is his first rome derby as a coach as a player i dived a little deeper into the stats for my man buckets and the loyal listeners out there he played in 31 derby games he won 14 he lost only 10 he scored two goals also as well so the fact that this is a derby game i want everybody out there to bet responsibly but roma in the derby De rossi plus numbers yes please buckets your thoughts i absolutely love it at plus numbers at even if i'm being honest at minus 120 minus 125 i'm still probably playing this and i actually lost a roma bet on the weekend when i took their money line against us lecce i know we talked about that but part of me thinks it's because roma might have been looking ahead to the derby and then also the europa league against milan i think lecce was a game to where we absolutely saw the rossi rest players and now those rested players are going to be ready to eat this lazio team alive i absolutely adore this play at plus odds and if i'm being honest because i always want to be honest with you no pressure, Ian, but I'm putting a unit and a half on this one when I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm certainly tempted to. I'm, I'm obviously not placing many wages this weekend at the moment. I'm, I'm taking a bit of a break right now, but this will be the one I do place. Um, obviously, it's coming up on Saturday, so I've got some time until I get there. Um, but yeah, listen, if you're, if you're tempted and you feel strong enough about it, but you got to remember this is a derby game. In any derby game, anything can happen. Um, but it's the fact that the Ross is there. It's a derby game. Everything's pointing into the direction of Roma getting a good performance out there. Watch out for Dybala. 
Watch out for Lukaku. Shots. Shots on target. Goals. Anytime goal scorer. Watch out for Pellegrini in particular. As I mentioned already, he's been absolutely fabulous under De Rossi. There's multiple players who are playing so much better under De Rossi than they were under Mourinho. And yeah. that's why I'm leaning heavily. So I'm looking at a scoreline prediction of possibly, and I said spanked, I'm looking at a 4-0 prediction here. It could be 3, but I'm looking at a hammering in this game. That's the way I'm leaning. I know Derby games are normally tighter and it could be a 1-0 game and I'll take that. But at the same time, I'm looking for two, three, or four goals in this game from Lazio. And I might even ladder that as well, just to have some fun with this game because it looks like a tasty affair and the numbers are pretty good. Buckets, you ready for um, the return? Oh, yes, I'm, re I'm ready to once again be in the shadow of the mighty MLS queen. She's currently sitting four and one from her last five games. So here is Hot Coco with this weekend's best. MLS bet. What's up guys? I'm back and I am back with this week's MLS pick of the week. For this week I am going to El Trafico which is LAFC versus LA Galaxy and the pick I'm going for is both teams to score no draw. This should put you at minus 105. This means I'm expecting goals from both sides. I'm also expecting for there to be a winner but the question is who will that winner be? Back to you guys. Ooh, interesting play right there. So both teams to score no draw in that game, LAFC against LA Galaxy. Your thoughts, Buckets? I I mean, it's a, it's a Coco pick. I love it first and foremost. Second of all, I love that it's minus 105, and that's been her most juiced odds yet because it's usually in the plus, and so that's just funny to me. But this is a great call. I like that it's the no draw too because right now, I, I think LAFC is probably the favorite, and they probably should be playing at home. But LA Galaxy's look tough. They haven't lost yet. LAFC has... I think two or three losses. I'm still getting better at MLS here, but this should be a really, really good matchup. And I think that's a great way to do it. Yeah, producer Jeff will have something to say about this game because this is his derby. And at the same time, um, yeah, LA Galaxy are fucking flying high at the top of the Western Conference right now. They've won three from their six games. They've drawn three. They have not yet lost a game. So love those numbers, but they've scored an impressive 13 goals from six games. Never thought I'd see this type of a reaction from LA Galaxy, but it's pretty impressive to see. LAFC right now, they've won two from the six games they've played. Nine goals scored, nine goals conceded. But as we have been pointing out, they have been a bit more improved recently. However, they did lose at the weekend against Colorado, and it was a late, late goal from Mihailovic that actually beat them. They're pretty poor on the road, but at home, they spanked Nashville five goals to nil. Um, in the game before that. So I'm expecting some sort of a response from LAFC in this game, in the derby. But Galaxy seem to always turn up and perform. I know they didn't last year, but they always seem to turn up and perform when it comes to big games. And I'm feeling that the Galaxy are that team right now that you don't want to play in Major League Soccer. So I absolutely love that bet. And of course, um, with producer Jeff... Having some action in this game wouldn't be a bad shout as well. So feel free to let us know what your prediction or best bet would be, Jeff, right about now. Love what Hulk Coco's doing, though. She's going to games that she feels on. She's not leaning on the same team all the time, even though Atlanta United have gone there a couple of times. Yakamakis is the goal scorer. But she was pushed away from Yakamakis this weekend. Do you know why, Buckets? Are they playing on the road? They're playing on the road to New York City Football Club, my fucking team, and Hot Coco will be at that game. So I said, there is no way you are placing a wager on the opposing team against our club. No chance. So she stayed away from that game best she possibly could, and I'm happy that she did so as well. Buckets, it's that time once again. It is time for FC Postage Time. Oh, I'm waiting for Jeff to play the cute little clip with the cat opening boxes just to say, hey, Jeff, heads up. Uh, we have no boxes. I went to the oh. post office this morning, and there were over under 0 0.50 boxes in the PO box. So right now we have nothing to open. The shelves are looking great thanks to all of you, but uh, I've got nothing to add, man. Could you want to promote then right now? Oh, so I that should... at least that way we could, you know, at least get more boxes. People out there send more shit to buckets. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's legal or illegal. It doesn't matter. Well, send I, it to <laughs> I, I don't know what he just said. Ian, here's a quick story for you. I did go to the post office the other day and I like, took my key out of my locker and there was a note saying like, come see the front desk or front office or whatever. And I went up there and she, the lady goes, Hey, uh, yeah, we had to let you know that we threw away one of your packages. And I said, well, that seems rude. You know, one of the loyal listeners. And she goes, the smell, whatever was in there, something died or it was like spoiled dairy. Something was in that package that was leaking through the envelope. So we threw it away. And I said, okay, 
I'm okay with that. Thank, thank you for that one. I think it was a wedge of cheese or something like that. But all of that to say, the P.O. Box is still open. If you want to send stuff, it's going to be 715 Show On Falls Drive in Dublin, Ohio. Jeff, if you can make that look better, that would be great. Right there. I don't even think oh. you need to put it up there. Jeff's just going to put it up there anyway, because oh, every time yeah. you put the address up there, it's the wrong fucking address, by the way. That's uh, listen, Buckets, um, do you think I would ever leave you empty or without any type of mail in your inbox? Because um, we did get a oh. little bit of a something in your mailbox this past weekend. Uh, Buckets, Amber, jump back in the DMs. And uh, I want you to take a look at this one here. And she jumped back in the big DMs with a big fucking way. Loyal listeners out there, Amber jumped back in and said, have a great weekend, can't wait. Maybe you will want to message me. And I think this was through the direction of buckets. And then after watching the show last week, Amber jumped back in and said, I need to invite John into the shower. She then also said, have a, a great Easter, y'all. And then she said, I'm ready for my date now buckets i know you've gone extremely red right about now and uh, i know it's <laughs> it's, been... <laughs> it's been a period of time since <laughs> since you uh, have been invited in the shower but i'm not gonna lie amber's back in the dms and your mailbox was not empty this week and to me that was a pretty special package right there hold up before you answer yep Let's just go to the one shot. Buckets, I want you to speak directly to Amber right now. Tell her what you think. Tell her what's possible and exactly how you feel. So, Jeff, feel free to go to the one shot right about now. Buckets, three, two, one. (laughs) Take it away. Buckets. Oh, yeah. This is this is by far. Usually my DMs that I get are after I lose a bet. It's people threatening me. So it's a much (laughs) different kind of forward DM. I've had very forward DMs. This is just a different style that I'm used to. Everybody out there, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It means the fucking world to us. Bucket, share exactly what you're doing on social media. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm a pretty demanding person when it comes to content on our show. But I have noticed you've been slacking a little bit on the fucking social media front. What's happening with the videos? Uh, The videos, we just haven't had enough games for me to be putting content out right now. There's not enough. No, don't give me that look. I, as we talked about with Kyle earlier, I don't force content. I don't force picks. So if I don't post on social media, it's because there's not a bet genuine that I find that's good enough to share with our viewers. But with that being said, with the weeks we've got coming up, there's no reason I shouldn't have at least a video every single day moving forward because we have so many good fixtures for the next couple months. I mean, honestly. Well, there you have it, everybody. Now we've got to the bottom of it. We know exactly why Buckets hasn't been posted the promised two videos per week. It's because he's been spending too much time in the self-love section. John Buckettimer, love you dearly. Love the loyal listeners. Thank you, everybody, in in the comments. It's been brilliant to hear everybody's comments. It's been brilliant to hear you be a part of our show, Stoppage Time. We're doing our best. Producer Jeff coming on board and changing the game. I mean, making it look the way it's looking. It's absolutely fabulous. I'm working behind the scenes right now on a pretty special project. Producer Jeff and uh, Buckettimer don't know about it yet, but hopefully it comes to fruition and we can actually take our show, Stoppage Time, into a bigger platform. But there's something working right now that may be pretty special for us, especially when it comes to this summer just gonna throw it out there however uh everybody please make sure you like comment subscribe do everything i'm asking you to do because if you like comment and subscribe it changes the game for us it makes our show bigger and better i dived into the statistics and the analytics of our show and i'm recognizing that a lot of people are clicking on the links that we're putting out on social media we appreciate that youtube if you could do us a favor and promote it more that would be fucking wonderful people are finding it on the youtube shirts we are recognizing more and more people who are commenting our first time commenters I appreciate that dearly. Can we get more likes? Can we get more comments? Can we get more people to subscribe to our show? I'd like to get to, I don't even know how many numbers we're at right now, but I'd like to get to more, maybe another 500 by the time we get to t- episode 20. That would be appreciative and it would certainly help us grow our show stoppage time. So like, comment, subscribe, and do what I fucking say. Buckets, your message. 
I'm so distracted right now. I'm thinking about everything I've said this show and my mind is shut off. Whatever Ian told you to do, just do it. That's all you got to do. It's that simple. <laughs> You've completely forgotten what you said in this show. You have no idea what you said. You should only be worried about the fact that you went against Borussia Dortmund three times in this show and what producer Jeff is going to do to you on the graphics. I'm excited to see. Anybody out there who is betting, please bet responsibly. We cannot say it enough. Everybody out there, men, Women, doesn't matter what gender you are, please take care of your mental health. It's always going to be the message that me, Buckets, producer Jeff, and Hot Coco will be sharing across our show stoppage time, and that will never, ever stop. But just like Buckets and our good friend Amber are going to do pretty soon, make sure this weekend you absolutely have it!